everyone. Welcome to SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Deb. And I'm Maria. And here's our podcast. For the realistic SLP. Welcome. Oh, look, we did that together. We're awesome. <laughs> Cheers to that. That's right. Our life is speech and yeah. we're okay with that. Understanding, language comprehension, expressive output. And then also you're teaching them like syntactically correct sentences. Right. Work smarter, not harder. Right. The first step is just how to communicate. Trying to help people to, you know, improve their speech language communication. Neurons that fire together, wire together. I like that. That's really genius. We need to choose that. (laughs) Cheers. Hey everyone, welcome to SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Deb. I'm Maria. And here's our podcast. For the realistic SLP. Welcome! Welcome. Yay! And we have the lovely Michelle Dawson here with us. Say hi, Michelle. Hello, ladies. Hey. (laughs) So Michelle, she's a speech pathologist with Hardwood Speech Therapy, LLC, in Columbia, South Carolina. She has a podcast and does online seminars with SpeechTherapyPD.com. And if that wasn't enough, she also tours nationally with PESI Incorporated, speaking about pediatric dysphagia for the medically fragile. So basically, she's an angel. Right. And we're not. (laughs) And we're like, why are you hanging out with us? But she's cool. But yeah, yeah, she's goals. She's, she's goals. goals. We want to hang out with people we want to be like. And maybe we're she we're goals for what she doesn't want to be like. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's like oh, God. psychology there. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. That's just such negative self talk. We don't do that here. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> But yeah, so we are, so we're in New York and she's in South Carolina. Um, but so we have our own wine, which we will talk about now. Maria will talk about. And then Michelle is going to talk to us about what she's drinking. Okay. We have uh, something called a sparkling wine. <laughs> Nando, N A N D O, Fra- Fra- Fragilino. Fragilino. It's Fragilino. Italiano. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's me trying to speak Italian. Yeah. <laughs> good job. Yeah, thank you. I thought it was good. And it's so sweet, this wine. It's very sweet. <laughs> I got this one time I was getting my nails done in Bay Ridge and they were, no, or Staten Island, one of them, but they're the same place. And right. they gave this out. And that's when I had this wine. I don't know where I got it per se, but yeah. I just found it. I had it laying around. It might have been from a Staten Island nail salon. It's it, it is very possible. <laughs> I'm not going to say no to that. Right. So you're going to say drink it? Oh, my God. You know what? This is so sweet. And to me, it's too sweet. It has a strawberry flavor. And it's like over. It's like strawberry juice mm-hmm. with a hint of wine. Mm-hmm. And But the cheese we got is amazing. So, so you, the, you vote sink it on that? Drink? Oh, God. Yeah, I'm going to vote sink it. It's too sweet. And if I didn't have this amazing cheese, I would have, like, really sunk it. <laughs> right. I so. guess I say sink it. Like, that means drink it even though you don't like it. But right. um, it's fine. It's good. It's good enough. Um, it's good nice. Enough. It's fresh. Um, but I don't like the juiciness of it. Yeah. But, yeah, so we vote sink it on our yeah. <laughs> on our wine. But what what are, are, the, the cheese is good. The cheese is great. Yes. It's called Dub Liner. Uh, it says 100% natural cheese, which is reassuring. Yeah. And it's in, from Ireland, so we have some. Uh, yeah, Mike wanted to get full credit for having chosen the cheese. Yes, thank you, Mike, for this awesome cheese. It is um, It is good. It's a hard cheese. It doesn't say, like, yeah, any just sort of, like. Dub, yeah, dub liner. It's just an Irish cheese yeah. um, from cows. Yeah. But it's good. We we enjoy it. It's an aged cheese. Yeah. But yeah, enough about what we're okay, eating and so drinking. What do you have, Michelle? My cheese is the cheese stick that I convinced my tiny humans not to eat because um, <laughs> I right. may or may not have made a bad choice on Sunday and gotten excited and eaten my, um, I, it, how, how do you say, is it the, the <laughs> it's like the prochetto, prochurco, it's it, it was, no, it was no, the no, meat no. wrapped in it. Uh, yes, it was this thing, and I got really excited uh, about it. And I, I was like, you, I bought this. Why did I buy this? And then I ate it on Sunday with my husband and wife. <laughs> so now I have it. cheese sticks. We're happy. It was it. it was lovely, We're and I didn't know it. if you would already have the wine open 
So um, I did not open mine. So now I'm trying to turn mine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. well, right. let's hear yes. you and pop our phone oh, line yes. um, that I found at the grocery store today. Um, because I did remember to, that I needed nice. additional wine as if there's never not wine in my house. Um, I'm a speech pathologist. I feel like that, <laughs> right. you know, happenstance. Yeah. Yes. It's like coffee in the morning, wine at night. Exactly. Water all day. Yes. You need three cups if you want to be a sweet dog. Oh, my goodness. I scared the dog. Um, okay. Come here, baby. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> just sweet. Um, uh, well, what kind this of one do you have? <laughs> a wine purchase, actually. We went to a bed and breakfast down <laughs> in um, Outer Banks. And the owner, it was the Juan Chi's house. Um, it's an amazing B&B. And she bred oh, little white it. dogs. So she's a miniature schnauzer, but she's all white. Oh. And after partaking of adult beverages and going to a friend's wedding, we woke up the next morning mm-hmm. and had purchased a purebred miniature schnauzer. <laughs> so, Wow. Look well, at that. good. I mean, that's not yes, the worst thing that can so, happen under yes, those circumstances. And then Pretty our other boring. dog is yeah. um, a rescue, and his name is Chewbacca. Um, because we're super nerdy, Aww. and he's a German Shepherd Black Chow, and actually looks like the Wookie. Oh, dude, yeah, with the big old black like tongue, Chewbacca. and he's precious. So, okay, so the fizzies <laughs> have gone down. Now this is um. Normally, I'm a lamb, um, a lambrusco sparkling wine, but like I think it's like it's a, it's a pretty aquily blue label. It's like let me try something different. So this is Yellowtail Bubbles sparkling white wine. Oh, I'm like okay, we'll give it a whirl. I mean, I normally sip. Here, give it a sip. Tell the listeners what you think about it. Oh, that's good. I like sparkling that's wine. That's good. It needs oh, good. All right. juice, good. and I would Is totally use this for mimosas. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, you have better luck on your end with the wine. Well, I'm still drinking it. I, I mean, so like, it's not sweet. bad. I feel like I'm just inhaling cheese oh. to help get the wine down. It's so funny. Like, when you take that breath a little bit, you know, you know, swallowing does happen in the absence of breathing, but mm-hmm. Let me when you take that breath right before you swallow, it, like I just breathe in strawberries. It's just like, it's yeah. like, it's just it's so like strong. Strawberry juice. Can I interject and be so wine. nerdy right now and explain why you have that? Yeah. Okay. You yes, have of course. 350 to 400 odoreceptors in your nasopharynx. So the reason why ah. food tastes better when you do um like breathe like you breathe in and you breathe it up and over through your nose um it's called retronasal olfaction the actual act of breathing mm. tasting on the surface of your tongue closing your mouth and breathing out through your nose is actually where we get more of our sense of taste it's not necessarily the taste buds on the surface of your tongue but it's those it's the integration of that with those odor receptors um, and what happens is if you have like hypertrophy of your adenoids or if you have a head cold and there's like snot going down on those odor receptors, that's why everything tastes okay. snotty. It's not your taste buds that are shot. Mm-hmm. It's that it's that your odor receptors are literally being bathed in boogers. So that's why it's such a strong strawberry flavor. Okay. Yay. Super wow. nice <laughs> That's so great. If you put a more desirable smell in front of somebody who is having swallowing difficulty, would that like increase sensory input and be more likely to trigger um, a motor response? Yes and no. Maybe. So what we have found okay. is that um, that the sense of flavor through the odor receptors with the taste buds actually go up through your um, brainstem along central pattern generators terminates in the gustatory cortex mm-hmm. of your brain. And so when um, you have a patient that's um, had like an infarct or, um, all right, so if it's, and when I say infarct, like a bleed in NICU, they say a bleed, like, okay, we've had a grade four bleed. Mm-hmm. That's a fancy way of saying they've had a grade four hemorrhagic CVA. Okay. Um, that's oh, in nice. my humble opinion. Um, I just took off my reading glasses. Sorry. In my humble opinion, I really think it's just more palatable for the parents to hear it presented that way than saying that their infants had a grade four stroke. Um, 
but the the concept right, is right, the same, exactly. but a lot of times that causes um, microcephaly or changes in the cortical structures. So if that gustatory cortex has been um, impacted, a lot of times those kids need much right. stronger flavored foods. So right, it's not mm-hmm. just the smell. Those are the kids that we crack down as like sensory seekers or they want like hot sauce, Tabasco sauce. Um Vienna sausages. Right. I mean, like a like something that you would not naturally give. So, like super yes. savory, super spicy yes. things. Yes. Which typically yes. kids are afraid of. They're like, if, if I don't want them to eat my snack, I'm like, it's spicy. Exactly. Right. Yes. But those yes. kids love it because they can. But we get right. our taste buds, sweet, right. salt, sour, bitter, umami, and we lose them in reverse because of natural atrophy of our cortical structures which is why our little old ladies like oh. sweet foods. I mean, you try to take away my grandma's chocolate glucerna and she will cut you. <laughs> like, I mean, she's, she's not yeah. always yeah. the pleasantly dimensioned lady. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. That's so I'm, funny. That's how nerdy I am. See, the, the champagne just hit my soul and no, I'm like, no, the way sparkling wine hit my soul and I'm like, ooh, nerd. Yes. Nerdy, yeah. being nerdy is good, yeah. you know? Let's so you both yeah. drink, drink it, on it all wine. the way, baby. But I will definitely save some of this for my husband tomorrow because this is a big bottle. It was a good deal. Yes. Oh, great. Right. Yeah, yes. true. No, and yes. sharing is no. good, too. So. Yes, mm-hmm. we like to keep it, too. But, but like. if you don't, I mean... You just can only live in the present, so. <laughs> yeah, but you catch a flight at 7 o'clock right. tomorrow morning and let me know how that works out for you. We want you to make your flight, yes. Yeah, definitely. Right. I've missed a flight before, two flights. It will go, like, I'd say, like, five really awful things in my life happens, and I'm going to throw missing a plane up really? there. Really? <laughs> it was awful. Stop. Yeah, it was bad. It was it was really rough. But um I'm sure that wouldn't uh, happen to let's, you. Let's no, hope you'll not. Be. But you know, I it will be yeah. fine. I have faith. Yeah. Just put put a cork <laughs> in it, literally, and you'll be good. So let's yeah. get to uh some business yes, here. Questions. Michelle, I was wondering if before we get into our questions, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, just like how you started off and uh, where you are now yes. and a little, you're a little plop, you know? Right. Present, <laughs> present level of performance. performance. Where you were, where you see yourself, where um, you started, okay. all that fun so, stuff. So I am an old country girl from um, Virginia and um, did my undergraduate degree at Old Dominion University. Got my, um, so I am a lady monarch. Woo, woo. And then um, completed mm-hmm. my master's degree at James Madison University. So, uh, oh, that's by me in Jersey, where I went okay. to high school. Jam- Not far. Um, La Jamie's gorgeous, and um, the the saying there is that you bleed purple, and if you survive grad school there, you have blood purple. <laughs> so, um, wow. Uh, yes. Well, congratulations. Great. Bleed purple yeah. now. Um. While I was going to graduate school full-time, I worked full-time as, for lack of a better phrase, an SLPA-ish. Um, the mm-hmm. Virginia Department of Education had um, set up, at the time it was called the Distance Learning for Virginia Educators. It was their DELV program. So what they did was um, James Madison, Hampton University, Longwood University, and University of Virginia um, all worked together and uh, created this online <laughs> program. But the lead professor from each subject matter from all the collective universities taught the topic. So, like, I had the best, mm-hmm. like, Dr. Power Defer, who's the VP of Ethics for ASHA, was my ethics professor. Um, oh, Runyon, wow. Dr. Runyon from Runyon's Rules taught me stuttering. That did not stick, though. I can't teach fluency disorders at all. Um, but, um, it was, it was a really amazing curriculum and I don't know how I survived it. Uh, and I was running a caseload of 50 to 60 kids in the public schools a week. Um, and I was married to my ex-husband and I'm always very candid and very honest about it. Um, while Mm -hmm. I was, 
um, going to graduate school full time and working full time, I went home and regularly was um, physically, verbally, and mentally accosted. Um, and I am alive because I took the bullets out of a gun one night. So um, oh my God. I say that because my faith and my Lord are bigger than that. And I I love my God and I cuss a little. And if I offend anybody on either account, I apologize up front. But if I went through, it was to be a witness on the other side. So um, I got right. out. I got my master's. I made up for some lost time. I there was there was mm-hmm. there was an Irish guy. Let's admit the accent's amazing. Um, and then um, a couple months later, I met my soulmate. And after four and a half months, um, we eloped. And almost eight years later, wow. we have um, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and two crazy dogs. And I'm blessed. Aww. So. That, that yes. is a perfect re- ending mm-hmm. to a very traumatic yeah. thing to go through. Yeah. Just it's crazy just so that you don't feel uh, alone in this. Like when I was in grad school, I was actually in an awful relationship that did also get but, rather yep. violent, uh, emotionally and and physically and every type of way. So, I mean, it's just so crazy. I think that like, I don't think back too much about it of like being thinking like, um, I just feel like so much stronger than I was then and, and just like present and focused on what I'm doing currently. And I think I also made up for lost time. So it's just crazy. Like what you can go through and get and get through. Right. And, yeah, and such courage for you, sh- well, both of you, <laughs> yeah. for sharing your experiences, because I'm sure there's a lot of women who are in these positions or were, and they maybe yeah. never bring it up. Right. And that's, like, one of the big things is, like, being okay to talk about it and bringing it up and having these difficult conversations. Yeah, and if you're telling yourself, like, I'm just going to do it for a little bit longer and then I'll stop, just maybe just do what you can to try to excuse yeah. yourself and, sooner. And that's... Right. Um, and that's what, you know, my dad was, no, my, nobody in my family knew. And I was like, I had to come to my own place and my own peace before I could make that decision. And, and unfortunately right. it's stigmatized in our nation that it's a lower socioeconomic status <laughs> minority victim. And I am not any of that. And I also personally get super right. angry when somebody's like, Oh, you were a victim. I was like, no, baby, I'm a survivor. I'm on this side. Life is good. Exactly. And my yeah. job now right. is to empower other women and men that like, get out, make yeah. it better. Do the thing. You got this. Wah! But right. Right. Yeah, yes. nothing can stop you. So you just keep going and you know, yeah. this too shall pass and you will be stronger and more capable. <laughs> on that note, I'm um, pouring another right. glass of yeah. Yeah. You have a lot of stuff we got to talk about. Questions. So, the so, time we you had to make up. So, let's you, get to it. <laughs> you touched upon this for a moment. You said how um, we we were reading your bio. So impressive, my goodness. Yes. Um, but you essentially started off as an SLPA in a public school. Can you just tell us a little bit about well, that it was, position? It was awesome. I um, I worked over in Gloucester County Public Schools in um, Gloucester County, Virginia, and it's not that big. Um, and (laughs) it was possibly one of my most happy professional times just because there's so much camaraderie when you work in a school, like you, you build joyful Uh bonds with those women because you see them like, I mean, especially when you're the, you know, SLPA or the SLT or the SLP, you're going to like numerous women's classrooms and you have lunches and you're doing bus duty and you're wearing Mm -hmm. all those hats. So you're building a community, yes. but yes, I work in a school, yes. so I know exactly what you mean. You have that, like we're all in this together. It might be tough, but we have it, each other's exactly. back. <laughs> yes. Right. But at the same yeah. time, um, it was not for me. And I remember somebody coming in, like the assistant principal coming in one day and saying like, in Virginia, they have standards of learning. And she was like, what are your standards of learning? I was like, what do you mean? And it was for like a little girl with DeGeorge's um, 22Q11.2. And she was homebound, but she came in for speech therapy with like an AAC device. I had no Mm. idea what I was doing as an SLPA. Like in retrospect, like none of that was core vocab. Like 
I just kind of want to like shake past Michelle and be like, Corvo cab, forget the fringe. But, um, but yeah. I'm, I'm sure you were present and what that person needed. I, I hopefully think so, but like, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard in your first year to know yeah. all these things, you know, to teach core. Cause I, I, I have a lot of students like yeah. that. And, and if you were in that position yeah, so and learning. not assisted, then that's like not something you yes. feel. But, right. Which I know, but I mean, like you've said yeah. in a prior conversation, you know, you have to accept where you are and, and give right. yourself permission. So I'll get there one day, but yeah. So she came in and she's, just like, what are your SOL goals? It's like, what do you mean? I'm trying to get her to say like, I want to swing because that's all she wants to do in her world is like swing on the tripod swing at home. And um, she was like, but how does that correlate to SOLs? And I, I wanted to like take her and be like, love, look at the baby. Like she's six, right. like screw SOLs. Right. Like she, this is right. where her world is like forever. And right. so I ended up actually having a panic attack and, um, in the public oh, schools yeah. and like that I can relate I'm I that's very yes. possible <laughs> why I meditate every day you know? <laughs> this is not surprising yes. I just, but, that's, that's what happened and I was like this is not this is not for me like I can't do this like I know what this kid needs and I can't be bound by like somebody right. else's version of an IEP goal that I didn't write right. when and so I, you don't even know how like long that person thought about yes. that IEP goal. They might have had sixty um, IEPs yes. too, right? And that was like one of sixty, and then maybe each of them had three to five goals, and it was just something that had to get yes. done that and week. without actually seeing the kid. Because it was like right. one of those things where, like, if you saw the kid and you understand like the actual disease, you'll know, like functional verbal expressive not going to happen for this particular baby you know and right. and so right. i just remember like okay you have to make it through the end of the semester you have to pass that last exam and then you graduate and you're going to be fine and then you'll have your masters and so i did and as soon as i got done i left and went to a hospital um and i thought that's where i was going to be forever like in a hospital because I was like, right. this is it. Hospitals are where everything's happening. Mm -hmm. And then right. I loved my hospital, but that's not where I was supposed to be. That's where I was supposed to get um, fundamentally shaped for everything else that was supposed to come. But mm -hmm. it was just really cool. It, it made me empathetic for everything the school SLPs have to go through because y'all have to put up with so much more than mm -hmm. any other any other right. center, hands down yeah i love the still skilled nursing facility because it's just like it's just it's the, it's a lot of work it's not like it's easy but at the same time it's not like this this paperwork workload mm -hmm. that's just insane like the schools are and like the um guidelines and stuff that just like what you're talking about like like the curriculum mm -hmm or um, whatever else, like whatever, anything else somebody wants to put on you, even though you're the one who's like trying to work with this individual on a daily basis. So um, yeah. I've always wanted to work in a hospital. So I'm super jealous. I keep applying and I'm going to keep applying. Well, honey, come but... south, leave the north. It's cold. Oh. We, we have numerous openings down here because right now we only have two schools you can get your master's in for the entire state. So like, wow. Hard for me because my boyfriend's a stand-up comedian, so we can only live in like New York or California. And I mean, like, I guess yeah, he is still my boyfriend. So unless he changes that, I'm going. Down south. Good point. <laughs> I, I got it. I got to so, admit, I miss New York. My ex-husband's family was from the city, and while he was a schmuck, like his family was lovely, and we would go yeah. up and spend. His family was in the city was Jewish, and we'd go up and spend Hanukkah over in um, Little Odessa, and listening mm -hmm. to you two talk like. For very oh long right! Time. Yeah. That was a cadence I was familiar with, and like it soothes me. I'm like, yes, talk more. Oh, <laughs> we'll talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Just do, do all the weird art no. things that you do. It's lovely. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Your accent is what's supposed right. to be soothing, I feel right. like. Like, if somebody were to classify our voices and dialects, I think you would get soothing, soothing. over us. us. And ladylike. <laughs> like, sometimes the kids cover their ears, and I'm like, fine. <laughs> I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you need to hear my baby sisters when the Mason, my family was actually bootleggers, um, honest to goodness bootleggers. And when the Mason jar gets passed around at like the family get togethers, the hills come out real thick, real quick. Yes. <laughs> like, it takes me a couple days to shake them like out of my voice because it's just, it's always there under the surface and it's kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That. Definitely, we see that. Oh here. yeah, <laughs> I listen. I watch Sweet Home Alabama, and all of a sudden, I'm from there too. And I'm like, oh, hey guys, yes. like, what's going what's on? Fun. I lived in Delaware for one year. This is how I talk now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna attempt. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna do that. So I'm gonna move on to the next question. <laughs> so, when you worked in the hospital, was that setting challenging as your you know first career as an SLP? So, um, um, yes. Um, my CF year was probably un- very unique. Um, mm-hmm. um, I took a job as the very first full-time SLP at a rural hospital, um, Riverside Walter Reed, also in Gloucester County. Um, and they had never had a full-time speech pathologist before ever. So they'd only mm-hmm. contracted PRN. Um, right. They had like, I don't know, six bed ICU, 20. 20 bed med surge floor. I mean, it was, it was a smaller hospital. Right. And I remember walking in on my first day and the um, registered dietitian turning and looking at me and going, thank God you're here. If somebody has a stroke, I put oh. them on honey thick and liquids and pureed foods. Uh, otherwise they're MPO until we send them to the big hospital, which was 45 minutes away. Oh. And I was like, Oh God. Oh. And right. they didn't have Welcome. eval forms. They didn't have daily notes. They didn't have plan of cares. They didn't have discharge notes. They didn't have, they weren't, there there wasn't even electronic medical records. Um, I had to order my diagnostic kits. I did inpatient in the morning, outpatient in the afternoon. And because we were the only hospital, my outpatient census ranged from two to 98, 99. Um, Oh. Because I was. So you had it. Everything under the sun. (laughs) I I once had a man do vodka oyster shots because it's you're in Waterman territory. (laughs) He did. He had had multiple right hemisphere CVAs, and so he knew he was not safe for PO. Um, So he did the vodka oyster shot through his G tube, and the oyster got stuck. And like he came in, and I was like, "So what's the smell?" And he was, "Oh my goodness!" And he was, he's like. You know, because of the dysarthria, he was like, the oyster is stuck. And I was like, okay, where's it at? <laughs> right. right. Can't say I uh, can't goodness. learn that yet. Uh, oh, I would not. Like, I put, I couldn't get why he wanted to put the vodka in there, but the oyster, I mean, you can't even well, taste I it. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, it's Waterman territory. you got to, like... This is what this is what they do. They go out on their boats and they crab and they pull in oysters. And that's there and so vodka oyster shots are like and it's like a rite of passage um yeah they're big on the jersey shore too I mean, really? we that do that yes, yeah they are. there's like oysters or you could have shrimp or you could have crab like it's yes. like it's like a bloody mary shot that you could take on the beach with all the guidos <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are quite my favorite shots. I I'm, do like them a lot, but I don't think I put it in my G tube. Yeah, I wouldn't. Stuck. It was most definitely certifiably stuck. And I was like, "All right, baby, we're not doing speech therapy day. Let me roll you right on over to the ER, which is across the parking lot." But um, right. yeah. yes, that. Who gave him a waste? Um, he got it himself with his drinking buddies. I mean, come on, man! It's like all old school country. Like they take care of their own, right? And. Uh, Okay. <laughs> after after okay, that, then. he blended the vodka and the oyster in the blender and then put it through stew, which would right. go through the tube. So, like, oh. okay, fair enough. Got it. Can yep. you get drunk that oh, way? Much faster, apparently. <laughs> oh, right. Because it goes straight in. Okay, yeah. good. good. Good to, to know. know. These are good facts that everyone should take <laughs> right. home with them. <laughs> but, good so, facts. Um, that, was, that was my CF, but I had some of the most amazing mentors of my life. The, um, 
the GI doc would pull me in and like explain case, like individual cases with me. Um, the chief hospitalist would go in and say, okay, he sat me down and we would look over the images from um, CTs and MRIs. And like he explained like where the infarct was. I mean, stuff that was not mm -hmm. covered in my, these people, in your courses, right. They, right. they poured their passions into me. And I remember my daddy telling me, you just got to be, you're, you're a vessel baby and you need to absorb everything you can because right. it's your job to take that information and be a healer. And right. it was really, it was really humbling that that's, that was my CF. Nothing could prepare me for that. I mean, right. right. I was a department of one working 60 hours a week, basically living off of caffeine, like a pot of coffee a day at minimum. Wow. And, but I mean, I was there from like seven in the morning till like four or five because you had to hit ICU and then be available for after school kids, you know? Right. right. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I just feel like now I need to stop letting men hold me back and go down south so I can do all the things that you got to do. Right. Um, Bring your boyfriend. We have an emerging art scene here in Columbia. I'm telling you, y'all just should come. We we Airbnb in my basement. You can totally stay on wow. us and like crash and enjoy the art okay. scene. <laughs> so we'll we'll come test it out. And uh, yeah, I'll like, we'll figure this out. Yeah. So maybe this was fake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, on our questions list, let's go. So, so yeah, so it sounds like it was point, challenging. So oh yeah. Yes. So, it's at our halfway yes. point. Yes. So at our halfway point, we just like to remind our listeners to rate us, review us, subscribe to us on iTunes. Follow us on Instagram. If you're not already, we're at SLP's Wine and Cheese Pod. I'm Maria underscore Katsonis SLP. Deborah Brooks, CCC SLP. Michelle, I don't know if you have um, Instagram you want to give I out. I do, or but any? I have to put my reading glasses on. <laughs> Okay. okay. That's well, you that's know, fine. those are very trendy, right. just like the emerging art scene in Columbia, yes. South Carolina. Um, mine are cat's eyes with sequins in the corners because um, I'm just saying if I'm going to age, I'm going to do it with sass and zest. Um, that's right. right. Yeah. So um, Facebook is Heartwood Speech Therapy. And as well as my my podcast, um, that Facebook is yes. First Bite. Um, and then my Instagram is um, at Heartwood Speech. And it's heartbeat because, you know, I love what I do. So heartwood speech therapy. Ah. And I I guess oh. my the people that I lecture for are at speechtherapypd.com and at Pessy Inc. And that's all the hats that I'm in tonight. Yes. And we just did uh we just did Michelle's podcast yes. speech bites. And so uh, we'll figure we'll tag that in our description. So that uh, listeners are able to yes. do a crossover listen episode. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. We tried to talk about leadership in the speech pathology world. And um, it was super informative even for us. And we were the yes. guests on it. <laughs> Definitely learned a lot within that. <laughs> yeah. Um, the last thing I want to bring up before we get back to the episode is that we are going to be at ASHA this um, 2018. I keep forgetting these podcasts could be on air for like five years. So right. in uh, 2018, November, we are going to be at ASHA. Boston. And in Boston, and our table is 872. We are by the Asha store, so come by. We're going to have t-shirts. I'm going to sell my coloring books, and um, anything else? That's yes, on, on our Patreon, we have oh, released yeah, we, we that. Launched that. We have released that, so check that out. Our first goal is for two, 100 people. No, one, yeah, yes, 100, 100 people. people for $2 each. So that's our goal. So if our listeners can help us meet yeah, our help goal. help us reach our goal. Yes, we would greatly appreciate that. Yeah, so if so. you ever felt like you listened to this podcast and it helped you in any way and you wondered, what can we do to support Deb and Maria, just head to that um, SLP's Wine and Trees uh, Patreon and just pledge $2 and that will be a great yes. help. Also tell your friends 
And on that note, I think we yes. plugged everything we wanted right. to. Right. I think we got a lot and in there. And we can go we back go to our back questions. To the questions. And I'm going to go uh, tend to my dog yes. who's scratching at the door. Right. That's, we'll have to keep moving. <laughs> so, Michelle. So did you always see yourself working with medically fragile cases? Um, no. Okay. I honestly thought I was just going to work in a hospital because I thought, Mm -hmm. um, all real SLPs worked in a hospital. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is, yeah, like I was, no, that's a common thing that we hear. Common thing. Um, Mm -hmm. it, 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 what is it? Grinds my gears. What? I don't even remember that's from when they say, Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard it actually just recently and they're like, you know, early intervention is really good for the SLPs who can't make it in a hospital. And I wanted to be like, Oh, that's not true. Oh, no, and I wanted to say, Sugar Bee, what you don't know is that, um, and listen to my accent getting really thick, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, a lot of good- the, the yeah. babies that we won't go visit are the ones that we send to the hospital because there's too many variables from personal safety mm-hmm. to cleanliness factors in the home that those are the babies that we send to like outpatient clinics, you know? Right, yes, and yes. I really truthfully saw myself as like this diehard acute therapist. And then Mm -hmm. um, my husband came in one night and he goes, he, Christian was a West Pointer. And so, you know, like once army, always army, even when you're not. Right. And um, he, uh, he goes, I found a job making, um, you know, weapons for the army down South. And I was like, okay, like, you know, this is his freshness. This is his love. And let's do it. So we go to South Carolina and it's very difficult, like you said, to find a job in a hospital. Mm -hmm. And so all I found a job was in early intervention. I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't like children. They're sticky. Everything. (laughs) They vomit. I mean, my three-year-old has finally accomplished picking his nose and not eating it, which has taken like several months worth of work not to eat the booger. I'm like, Yes. So Gold. check, check <laughs> done now to pee through the night and have a dry pull up. Check. And then <laughs> I will have accomplished that. Then I then I will be a successful mommy. But um, I, I ended up getting sucked into the vortex that's early intervention. And then mm-hmm. one day, in, um early intervention is, and they're called different things in different states: a service coordinator, a case manager, you know what. Mm-hmm. Happened. Um, somebody called me and was like, Hey, I hear you're the one that takes all the special kids. And I'm like, wait, what? Right. And so you kind of, you kind of like, you uh, didn't even accident. know that yeah. they kept giving you that. Kind yeah. of incidentally. They just act- knew you would keep saying yes. Yes. I go no. to, I, I would get the kids that nobody could crack or there was something that just wasn't right. And, and they kept finding their way to me. And so, you know, I, I go to a different early intervention company and, you know, I feel like if you get in the world of private practice, eventually you're not happy until you have your own private practice. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. Um, two years ago, this past August, my, um, my grandma that raised me, um, she um, fell and she passed and she always told me, honey, you go down there and show them what a Virginia girl's made of. <laughs> and <laughs> um, she was like, basically, step out in faith, do this. Mm-hmm. And so two years ago, I did. And I put out my little single shack, you know, Michelle Dawson at Heartwood Speech Therapy. And like, you know, I my my uh-huh. mother-in-law designed my... Um, company logo based off of my family tattoo because you know we're oh, Irish wow. and Cherokee and so like the tree like we all have it like all my siblings we all have the tattoo and it's very funny oh um, that's yeah. cool um see we do zest it up in the south we, we have tattoos <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she's really selling the south she's like we have tattoos we have, we have liquor we have comedians come down here <laughs> oh, yeah. sounds great but uh yeah so i um i did it and i stepped out and um i ended up getting all the cases nobody could crack and it's been really cool like the kids that were feeding aversions only Give me a baby that's a feeding aversion uh-huh. only. Give me yeah. a baby that's a behavioral version. And it's never 
just that. There's always an right. anatomical etiology. You just have to be willing right. to persevere and chase it. And I think that's what makes me different is that I'm never happy until we have a concrete medical etiology. Mm-hmm. So, that's great. Yeah. And, and most of the times they're super far out there. Like you didn't see that mm-hmm. one coming, but. Right. Yeah, yeah. You really have to dig deep. I, I know what you mean. You really dig deep and yeah. snot always what you think it is like what the obvious answer might be like oh we just wants attention and it's like no no, no, no. let's it's, go back five steps <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh he's a behavioral feeding disorder no he has the worst case of eosinophilic esophagitis that the children's hospital has ever seen and it's like it's right. history but you know whatever it was a behavioral feeding disorder and i'm like yeah no <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, Yeah, that kind of brings us to our next question. I was wondering, um, what do you think are the best, um, if there are any, and it could be more than one, uh, certifications, like what are the most valuable certifications for a medical SLP? Um, Okay, so that I'm totally biased in. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so if... If I could, if I could ma- wave a magic wand and like magically have my to do list, my own personal to do list on, um, on my personal to do list for like check the box kind of thing, um, because of the patients that I treat, I want to take my um, CLC class, which I'm actually for my 36th birthday present to myself. I'm oh, wow. for my CLC class in in March. Um, and it's this what is that? A certified lactation consultant. Um, oh, my sister is a lactation consultant. Okay. Yeah. And she is always like, she's like, she says that uh, like the speech pathologists that she works with are miracle workers. And when she can't figure it out, she sends her uh, clients to them. And I just felt like I wanted to be that SLP yes. would send. Yeah. Do, do it, baby, because that's yeah. where I'm at. I'm on the receiving ends of the kids that the CLC has like questions or needs a second opinion on. And Mm -hmm. normally it's laryngomalacia, trachomalacia. It's, um, CVA, like perinatal CVA that was missed. There's, there's something. And it's cool because by working with them, we can kind of piece it all together and like tease it out. So, um, and that, lactation consultants are so passionate about their job that they are like super easy to work with because they, they love it so much. Like they want to, they want to fix it. Yes. And also I'm totally girly enough to admit that like, I really love the smell of newborns. <laughs> and so right. like, I mean, I have babies, but like when I go in and do the consult, I'm like, don't be weird, Michelle, don't smell the babies. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> But like I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. have that smell. It's like, oh. it's, yeah, it's wonderful. It's like it's like baby crack. But um, yeah. So that's on my to do list. I really want to get NDT certified, um, neurodevelopmental training, because we are not taught as a profession about reflexes, core reflexes, mm-hmm. how to integrate the reflexes, the importance right. of. Um, I mean, if your core is shot, you are not going to be tolerant for any PO. Like, right. Yeah. Or um, if you don't have those reflexes integrated, you don't have that volitional control. So that's yeah. another. Yeah. Yes. Perfectly. Yeah. So per- like, mm-hmm. why isn't this a part of the graduate study know. at all? Why don't we have like fees and MBS and like all these things that like have to be extra things that you pursue outside of your already extensive right. education? Yes. I don't know. I actually have an answer to that, but that's only right. because of like the other hats that I wear that are like non-financial disclosures. So we didn't cover right. those. But, um, it's because it's because of the depth and the width of our scope of practice. Yeah. They have to right. cover the big nine. And as our sister rehab facilities, like P- physical therapists have moved to like a third year for like a PTD. Um, right. And occupational therapists are just laying the groundwork for an OTD instead of the mm-hmm. OTR, it'll be an OTD. So like give it 10 years, maybe 15, and you'll see a shift because now we have the PhD, the clinical science doctorate and the SLPD. And right. with that, it will probably turn into something like um, 
you know, for some individuals, like adding on a third year of grad school to have like the basically the equivalent of an SLPD or clinical science doctorate. And that's going to be years in the making. But um, yeah, sorry, squirrel. But then also in terms of the financial obligation that would put on, like, I could imagine paying for more school at this point in my, I don't know. I feel like I'm always like, boo hoo, student loans. It's like always me. But I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, but the certifications aren't aren't free either. So it's like, all right. (laughs) It's like sometimes I feel guilty for motivating people for pursuing this field, knowing how much of a financial burden it's going to be on them to have to cover all of the costs of it. I personally would love to be like a professor one day. Me but, too, which I'm like, yeah. I'm guilty too. And, but I don't have a PhD. Mm-hmm. And because I don't have a PhD and I work primarily in the world of like pediatric dysphagia or like pediatric neuro rehab, like the only way I would even have any legitimacy is if I had the BCSS. Right. Mm-hmm. Prerequisites to but the you have so many tools. <laughs> I think you could probably find an adjunct position, but yeah, which I mean, which would be awesome. But I also have some ideas for some really cool patents floating around in my head, oh, which is okay. probably why I don't sleep. And Great. yeah, I want to do the research behind those. Mm-hmm. And you know, I got some feedback that like the only way that I could actually be taken seriously to do the research was if I had all the alphabet soup and I'm like well no offense but thing one and thing two are in the private school down the street so that's not happening because I can't take a pay cut so yeah which and and you know what Asha has heard those concerns because they recognize that our that it's not feasible because PhD stipends are not fully funded right yes they're not and they're not, but like, we can't, like, I would love to do that, but like $17,000 a year. I mean, I right, probably right. pulled that in and like, I live in Brooklyn. college. Like, right? I, I don't even know. <laughs> like it's too expensive to live. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but I mean, I don't know. Be a shift in yes. something so that, yeah, more of a, more professionals can move forward in the field. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, seriously consider, um, that's where, um, I, I do what I can for the ASHA foundation when and where I have like extra funding, mm-hmm. um, because they fund, um, scholarships for students and for individuals right. doing research and pursuing higher ed. So like, I, I go to the fancy dinners like once a year, but I mean like, yeah. Hey, take my hundred dollars. It's not a lot, but like right. everybody's $100. Like hey, it's, it, it makes a difference. Dollars. Yeah. It makes a difference. And you're passionate about it. So, yeah. you know, your hundred dollars is going a long way. <laughs> right. So at this point, we're going to go over tips or tricks. But since you're our guest, we were hoping you can give us two tips or tricks. So do you have <laughs> any tips or tricks related to oral motor um, exercises or just anything related to that topic? Um, I totally think that um, food should be thy medicine. Mm-hmm. Okay. I When it comes to PO intake for pediatric dysphagia, I do not believe in the utilization of non-speech oral motor exercises ever. Uh I I do not vibrate the mouth. I do not utilize chewing tubes. I do not do any of the things. We don't do that in our adult neuro um, atypical population. Uh And there's a huge disconnect between our adult population and our pediatric Mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to food chain out to like functional PO intake, then I utilize actual food. Right. Um, so, and I feel very strongly about this because I have done like a bodacious amount of research. So, um, like I'm a fan of like the silicone net feeders so that when like a patient bites into it, Mm -hmm. they actually get a bolus in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Dr. K. Toomey with the SOS approach is all about classical conditioning. You don't like throw the kid out into the deep end of the water. She said you like tiptoe in. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to tiptoe in and actually use increased viscosity of the food and temperature changes and flavor changes. And ever since I made that shift a couple years ago, I have seen across the board 
my the babies that I treat make huge progress. That's wonderful. Great. That's an excellent tip. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> in the nursing home, we only use like food as any sort of dysphagia treatment, just like trialing and, and seeing. But do you use any techniques such as like effortful swallow or um, tilting the head? Yes. Um, oh, God. I wish I could. All right. Hold on. I got to put the readers back. Okay. Up. Um, there, I, have to, I have to find this amazing freaking article. And that's why right, I like, yeah. so we want to like, hear about that for sure. Yeah. Okay. So Asha Sig has like the special interest group 13 is like only on dysphagia. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I hated reading journal articles in college because like, let's be honest, it's completely like not right applicable to the thing that it is that we do. Right. Um, but they had this amazing article and I think it was out of... Ireland or England a couple years ago, and it was one of the 2016 SIGs. Um, and what they talked about was um, uh, multiple disciplines working together. And they did a baseline analysis. So they did like a ma- baseline instrumental swallow exam on a modified barium swallow study. And then they gave group A traditional speech therapy. And when I say traditional speech therapy, I'm using like, okay, so they did all the normal like flashcards. And I always think flashcards. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> like, yeah, no, 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 no. But you're okay. right. Like oral motor exercises for PO right. intake, which is like not a thing, but like, that's what they did. And the second group, they integrated speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. Mm-hmm. And what they found was that when the babies increased their diaphragmatic strength, Okay. If you build your house on sand, it will shift. Mm -hmm. You put that house on rocks and those babies are going to have a base and their PO intake improves. So that was the premise of the research argument. Mm -hmm. Um, Hang on. So it's like go back to the core. Right. We go back. We talked about that in the last episode too. Yeah. Yes. Always go back to the core. Right. And Oh my gosh, I will find this. I feel like that's I something I think about so often, not just with dysphagia, but also with just like voice and stamina. I have um, some little kids who just like are overall, like they just strung, struggle with strength and stability. And it's like they can't use adequate vocal volume or have any sort of like sustained phonation because they just don't have that core support. They can't. Uh, like judge how much air that they need to produce a certain utterance and they're just kind of like slouching and melting there yeah. into their seat that's so I like to do like planks with them yes but that's that's okay so that's just it it was Godwin and Rogers 2016 page 17 mm-hmm. it was a sig 13 Godwin and Rogers okay but that's planks planks would be a perfect yeah. one pull to sit getting them on the bouncy ball. And that particular um, research article, what they did was they put the kids on a bouncy ball. And then the OTs did that thing that they do that makes it look like their head's going to pop off. Like when they bounce. Right, yeah. They They look like a a bowel head. Yes. (laughs) yes, That's literally what I use to describe it when I give my lectures. They bobblehead the babies. The kids that were (laughs) bobbleheaded, their before and after swallows were dramatically improved. And then what they did is they did a swallow study, did a bobblehead session, did a swallow study. And even after one, one hour session, the kids made that kind of right. dramatic improvement. Cause I think that also it like, even after that first session, even though you didn't like build up a ton of strength, you like let, like you provided sensation to an area that's been like neglected of sensation. And so like, it's just kind of waking up all of like the areas of activation and then you're also like, once you start to perceive that area, then you can use it and build it. Just kind of like with anything that you learn ever. You two have seriously got to go back for your <laughs> <laughs> I um, want like, to. NYU has a multidisciplinary PhD that I want to do. It's speech, OT, PT, music, art. Wow. That's I want to do that. Okay, what, what if it... Is it a PhD or is it like a clinical science? I can't. I think it's a. It's, I think it's a PhD program, but it's like called like multi rehab, multidisciplinary rehab something. I don't know what it is. I just I'm read a description good. once, and I was like, "Oh, that sounds like something I would love." There's there's one down here at MUSC, and it's um, uh, rehabilitative sciences. Oh, maybe PhD. that's it. And then. Yeah, and then the concentration is in dysphagia. And I'm like, well, that's fantastic. But, like, I treat, like, the tiny humans. Right. <laughs> so, like. Right. Yeah. yeah. You can sing to them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. just... 
Yeah, I, I'm like, maybe I can make an argument. Let's let's focus on, like, laryngeal structures for, like, eight and under. Right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's great. That's, that sounds smart. <laughs> maybe I'm smart. <laughs> um, so then, Maria's got, what are you doing with the next yeah, one? Yeah, so do you have any sensory stimulation tips or tricks? But you kind of already gave one. I guess you can count the therapy ball as one. Mm-hmm. Or unless you have another one. Because that's going to also, that's increasing no. sensory proprioception. Yes, yes. And don't forget the and feet. And the feet, yeah. So that's going to ground them. the feet. Yes. Okay. So this is a wine and cheese yeah. event. It sure so, is. <laughs> and I mean, it, it sure is. And I've seen your pictures and you two are petite <laughs> women. And so I'm Oh my God, thank you. Yes. Point, <laughs> yes. I mean, look at you. Y'all are gorgeous, right? Um. But like y'all have probably gone to a pub where you sit at a bar stool and it's one of those tall tables with like the tall bars. Yes. And I'm like bringing back every sex in the city yeah. episode ever mm-hmm. in my head. Right. And they, you know, you're sitting there and then you have one too many and you go to get down and like, you're super oh. discombobulated because you don't know where your body is in space right. because your feet have. Bristles, right. Right. Oh. Okay. So there's a really good book called The Happiest Baby on the Block. And they talk all about see if the library has it. (laughs) Add it to your library app on your phone. The library. Um, The the Happiest Baby on the Block says that basically we send the babies out of the womb three months earlier than what they should be sent because we have to be able to get them through the vaginal Uh path. And that for the next three months, we should basically be recreating uh-huh. the womb. Tight right, swab. Right. I.e. creating pressure through the feet. From the get-go, these babies, especially if they were premature, and I had two preemies, so, like, I get that, right? Um, let me tell you what, like, latching at breast, they had to be latched on with pressure through their feet. If the pressure was not through wow. their feet – and they didn't have a 90 degree right. angle between foot and ankle, 90 between ni- like hip and knee. And then when you get bigger, like that 90 between like um, knee and hip. So 90, 90, mm-hmm. 90. Oh, wait, the, the SLP, the wine part of the wine and cheese just bested me. But yes, you get the three drink 90s, it. right? And if they don't have that, then they have insufficient proprioceptive awareness to create an effective seal even wow though. right that's yeah. very interesting because if I they see. have the feet they get the feedback yeah. yes exactly yeah. because they know where their yes. body is in space because up until two weeks ago they were in this tight little right. warm liquidy cocoon mm-hmm. right so it's like they, they would feel also, like they were just holding on to a nipple like and dangling from a nipple yes. with no support Rounding. almost Rounding. Yes, it's it's the infant, toddler, or child at the right. bar stool right. after yeah. yes. the wine and the cheese. Right? Okay. So we have to give that feedback. And what I have found is that simple, tiny change. Right, it makes such a big a difference. Start. Wow. You can duct tape a phone book and or. That's so funny you mentioned that. One of the OTs at my school did that today. She duct taped. I was like, what are you holding? <laughs> And she's like, I'm she's duct taping the phone book. And I, and she didn't have to tell me. I was like, oh, so the feet can touch the ground? She's like, yes, how'd you know? I know, I yes. know, <laughs> you know. So I'm like, so anybody has uh, phone books? Don't throw them out. <laughs> I can't even remember. <laughs> she has she kept her phone different. books for a good reason. So is that. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, uh, before we wrap it up, do you have any tips or tricks you can give any SLPs that want to transition into being a medical SLP? Because Deb and I get questions all the time. This oh, yeah. is a big question that we get. So since you are someone who is working with Medically Fragile, you worked in the hospital, do you have any tips for them? Um, so many that I can't, I don't right. know where to yeah. begin. Um, one, take Every class that you can by Dr. James Coyle okay. out of um, University of Pittsburgh. He normally lectures with um, Northern Speech Service. It's NSS and their logo is like purple and white because I have like a weird photographic yeah. memory sometimes. Um, but absolutely anything you can by Dr. James Coyle, whether you are peds or adults, because that is amazing. That's a great um, tip. The 
that he's he looks like a garden <laughs> minus the hat. And I will only say that on the record because it's the wine portion. Yeah, right. Wine. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. That's okay. That's your opinion. We're all right. It's our yes, opinion. Um, but the man, the man is brilliant. Um, absolutely brilliant. And he goes through and he actually dispels like some common myths about like the watery eyes and how that's actually like um, nasal regurgitation of the bolus and like nasopharyngeal irritation and not actually an overt sign symptom of aspiration. Yeah. Um, um, uh, anything you can by the board certified specialty licensure, um, especially they have information on like cranial nerves. Um, I think that's critical. Then, then is the, the chasm between the worlds. We have, a significant body of literature for adults and insufficient literature right. for pediatrics. And that sucks. I mean, like with the capital right. S because in the peds world, it's, Oh, this is cute. Oh, this is fun. Oh, this will fix your kid. Mm -hmm. Now you have to actually dig into literature from our sister fields of yeah. OTPT, which makes sense, but also right. allergy mm -hmm. GI ENT, pulmonology. Are you aware of epilepsyfoundation.org? Right. I think it's epilepsy.org. The list goes on There's and on. Phenomenal right. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it goes on. Um, Included, but not limited to all these disciplines. Yes. Yes. It, honestly, I've gotten to the point that when I find something that I love and adore, I just throw it on my website and I just have a list of resources. Oh, and well, we'll resources yes. You have to check that out. Yeah. Heartwood speech because therapy. Heartwood speech therapy. What, what I got it. I got it for you. It's heartwood speech therapy.com and they can get to see the logo you were referring yes. to too, which you, which is That's purple and it's, it's purple because right you bleed purple. You see, so everything's connected. I, well, it's connected. I my tattoo is technically black, but that's because I was may or may not have had one too many the night that I got the that's tattoo. A, Otherwise, it would have done. Purple. I mean, why else get a tattoo? Right. I don't have any. I have four. I'm, I'm boring. I guess. <laughs> Maria, come to the south, and we will get a tattoo. You have a you're tattoo. Like the spokesperson for the south. Deb has to move to the south to work with adults. I need I to am get some, over the snow. I need to get some tattoos. <laughs> I know a guy, like literally. So come on down. <laughs> okay. Well, do it. Look it up. Go get tattooed. So <laughs> we like to end with a quote, but we can share our tips or tricks. Uh, oh. Debbie, yeah, if you want to give your tip or trick. I didn't even think of a tip, so you can oh, okay. right now. That's well, will. you know, since we're talking about collaborating and working with other disciplines, I'm just going to take that tip or trick of uh, taping some phone books. Or it doesn't have to be phone books. could be just any books you want to throw out and uh, use them for a kid to make sure their feet are touching the floor. Yeah. So if you have all different ages and one or two chairs, and what are you, what are you going to do for their feet to touch the floor? Use some books. And my tip or trick is going to be, um, I think, I don't even know. I didn't even think of anything. Uh, <laughs> um, you can use just, well, we, I, we did talk about like using different writing utensils. Um, and what I did find to be effective in my therapy, even though this is something you might have to purchase, um, using like branching out of your typical art materials. We used oil pastels and stuff. I love oil pastels. Oh, I yeah. use them too. It looked amazing. Yes. Like the artistry, I just know. like with the most basic guidance, it looked amazing phenomenal I know. it not only makes my wall look beautiful but right. it boosted the confidence yes, of all of kids. the kids they're That's like true. i can't believe i made that yes oil pastel they're really not that expensive they're not if they if i approve them then you know it's not that expensive and it definitely <laughs> increases your like hand strength because you have to like rub it and stuff right. and everyone's like oh this is hot oh this is hard and i'm like keep on going <laughs> So that's yeah. our tip. Oil trick. pastels, phone books, old books, just yeah. use them all. <laughs> and do, you already gave us so many, but if yes. you have something to share, then definitely go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm relishing in the fact that you went to oil pastels because they're, that's like one <laughs> of my favorite things in the world. Yeah, and they're I so have great, right? like upstairs in the hall closet. And I'm like, Ooh, the mountains are calling. Let's go draw a tree. <laughs> yes. yes. It yeah. makes and it comes out so good. It really does. I agree. Effortlessly. 
So we want to end with our quote. I Michelle. want Michelle to say. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm getting there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead, Michelle. End us with our quote. All right, ladies and gentlemen, but primarily the ladies, <laughs> well-behaved women rarely make history. Step right. out in faith, y'all. You got this. Yes. <laughs> cheers. Yeah. Cheers. And with that, we cheers. We never cheers. Okay. Yes, cheers. cheers to that. Do you have two glasses you can hit together? Michelle? Yes. I actually do. Yes. <laughs> <Good. Yeah. laughs> For the bottle and the cup and whichever one you want to drink out of is totally fine by us. <laughs> yeah. But um But yeah, so that's been our latest episode of SLP's Wine and Cheese. I'm Deb. I'm Maria. And Michelle, say goodbye. Bye. It was such a pleasure talking with you and thank hopefully you. we could have you back. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much yes, for doing we'll this. We'll figure that out. And we'll see you at Asha. Yes. I will see you there. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Stay flat.